the PFO gets blamed again. This time, it may be for real. That's a uh, title of a commentary by Fred Beauvais. Uh, it's in the April 2014 issue of Jack Interventions, and he is discussing this paper, effect of catheter-based PFO closure on the occurrence of arterial bubbles in scuba divers. And I am with the first author of that paper, Dr. Jakob Hornick, uh, Hornick, sorry, MD, Charles University and the uh, University Hospital in Prague. That's uh, Motel, Univer Motel University Hospital yes, and at the Czech Republic. Uh, this is a fascinating paper. What, what has led you to do this study, I think, in the first place? Because how did you make the connection? Oh. Well, first, uh, thank you for, uh, for coming here, here to introduce our research. Well, uh, the first place, uh, I'm a diver, <laughs> and I've been doing it for a long time. And actually, I've been diving with uh, several colleagues and cardiologists, and I think it was the discussion came up in, when diving, that we, we were trying to figure out a research that would, uh, would connect the two. <laughs> in general, we are looking at, uh, uh, at uh, the divers with the PFO and trying to stratify the risk of uh, decompression sickness in these divers. And uh, the uh, ultimate goal would be to find an uh, optimal management of, the, of these divers. Uh, we know from several papers that uh, PFO is associated with the increased risk of decompression sickness and the mechanism of course is, uh, is thought to be paradoxical right to left uh, uh, shunting of bubbles that occur after, after most dives. And uh, in this uh, particular study we sought to determine whether catheter-based closure would uh, be effective in, uh, in, uh, in preventing the, the right to left shunting of the bubbles. So we, uh, we used uh, uh, simulated dives in a hyperbaric chamber uh, to simulate uh, the occurrence of venous bubbles and, and uh, have, had, we had two groups of divers, uh, a closure group and a group with PFO and uh, tried to look if uh, there would be difference in, in arterial bubbles. Uh, first of all, we have screened 183 divers uh, for the presence of PFO by transcranial Doppler and we have uh, confirmed the positive results with transesophageal echo. So we had a 47, of divers, 47 divers with a significant PFO and uh, 20 of those chose uh, to have their PFO closed uh, by catheter-based closure. Uh, so we compared this uh, 20 uh, divers in the closure group with the 27 in the PFO group. We used a single air dive in a hyperbaric chamber and we assessed the presence of bubbles uh, with uh, transthoracic echo for the venous bubbles and uh, transcranial Doppler for the arterial ones. We used two different dives. Uh, uh, a shallower 18 meter dive and a deeper 50 meter dive uh, uh, and uh, uh, we also uh, watched for uh, decompression sickness uh, symptoms. This was not a predefined endpoint, but uh, nevertheless. In both dives we, ha we had similar results. Uh, majority of the divers actually had uh, venous bubbles after the dive um, and um, PFO closure was associated with uh, complete elimination of, uh, of arterial bubbles. We found uh, about 75% of venous bubbles in the 18 meter dive and in all divers except one in, in the deeper dive. And uh, uh, in the deeper dive, uh, interestingly, in all the divers with the PFO, the bubbles are arterialized and in none in the, in the closure group. So to summarize, we really found that uh, PFO closure was associated with the complete elimination of the, P of the arterial bubbles in, in these divers. And uh, we think that this uh, really shows that PFO uh, plays a key role in the embolization of bubbles after, dive, after dives and that uh, catheter-based closure uh, is effective in eliminating those bubbles and probably uh, should play a role in uh, prevention of uh, decompression sickness recurrence in the symptomatic divers. I mean, PFOs have been around for a long time. They, there's been so many studies and yet they really haven't shown a great benefit from closure. But in this particular case, if you have a patient who you know has a PFO and wants to be a diver or is a diver, this really argues for some sort of intervention to close that up. Yeah, well, I think uh, in, uh, in diving it's more straightforward, the mechanism. Because in, in, uh, in stroke, for example, we have several other mechanisms, AFib exactly. of course and so on. In diving it's, it seems to be really straightforward and, and the, the people involved in this really knew it. But we are fortunate to have a large group of, of divers and, uh, and uh, divers that have this closure performed. So we were able actually to, to prove it that uh, for the first time that, the, that there is uh, really effect uh, in divers. We are now doing several studies that will give us some more clinical answers in, in a follow-up, so we will see uh, how this works in, uh, in long term. And I think uh, then it's going to be a question 
who is uh, the good candidate to be closed and who is not. And, and uh, I think it, it's going to be a discussion between the patient and the, and, and the doctor. Yeah, absolutely. Because this is not a very uh, yeah. <laughs> easy decision, of course. Well, you're, you're lucky because it's a great paper, but you're lucky because uh, Dr. Beauvais wrote the commentary. I mean, he is, I don't know if you know or not, but Dr. Beauvais wrote the textbook on diving. He's the co-author. <laughs> and this is, this is really an excellent opportunity to go see Dr. Beauvais' work as well as this particular study, which is, like Dr. Beauvais says, blaming the PFO once again, but this time it really may be real. So take a look at uh, Jack Interventions. It's in the April 2014 issue for Cardiosaurus World News. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.